Well, hello there. The topic is still photosynthesis, and now we're looking at this section in your study guide, uh, your questions. Uh, photosynthesis and the production of macromolecules. What are macromolecules again? Well, they are, uh, they are what? Uh, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. Is that right? Does uh, photosynthesis directly produce any of those? Well, sure it does. There's good old, uh, good old glucose, right? Which one is the glucose? It's a carbohydrate, simpler complex. Very simple. Pretty close to about as simple as you can get as far as carbohydrates. So glucose directly produces one simple carbohydrate. So what's glucose got to do with the production of proteins, for example, and phospholipids and, and uh, other lipids and uh, nucleic acids? That's what we're about to see here. Let's take it step by step. What two st substances are used up by the reactions of photosynthesis? Well, just looking at this diagram, it goes around like this. What two substances are used up? These two right here, carbon dioxide and water. They are used up. You give a leaf cell, that represents a leaf cell. I know, you know, you can see why I'm not an artist, right? Okay. Anyway, but that represents a leaf cell. What does this leaf cell need to be in business besides sunshine? It needs some carbon dioxide and some water. And so the next question or the follow-up question is, how does each of these substances, these raw materials, these simple raw materials of photosynthesis, how does each of these substances get to a leaf cell where obviously photosynthesis takes place? Uh, most of a plant's photosynthesis. Well, let's see. Water, that's incredibly simple. How does water enter a plant? Enters, uh, enters through the roots, obviously. Through the roots, up the stem, into the leaves, then what happens? Well, the vast majority, I mean 99 plus percent, it just passes on through, comes out as water vapor. And so a lot of water passes through a leaf on a hot day in Oklahoma with the wind blowing, just sucks the old ground dry as that water passes through a plant and into the, into the air. Uh, but a small, in the sun shining, when the sun shining, a very small part of that water is used up, taken apart, used up in the complex reactions of photosynthesis. So the water, the water enters the plant through the roots, obviously. What about the CO2? The CO2 is a gas. We're exhaling it. Plants inhale it, so to speak. Plants do exactly the opposite of what we do. And so, uh, we saw in a previous video those, a picture of the openings under, on the underside of leaves, sometimes on the top side, sometimes the other side, sometimes both. But anyway, there are openings in the surface of the leaf through which CO2 diffuses. It diffuses inward, at least when the sun's shining. And so, uh, what would make it diffuse inward? It has to do with concentration, right? The concentration would be, have to be higher where? Outside the leaf than inside the leaf. What would make the concentration of CO2 higher on the outside? Well, it's being used up on the inside. Being used up by what? Being used up by photosynthesis. There you go. So that's how those two things, CO2 and H2O, get to a leaf. Now, uh, question two is just purely review. We've already mentioned it. Uh, what carbon-based molecules produced by the reactions of photosynthesis? What? Well, here's, the, here's what's produced by photosynthesis. Gee, which one's the carbon-based molecule? Gee, this one right here, right? Good old glucose. And so nothing more, nothing less, good old glucose. What about this model represents carbon? The black balls, right? Carbon atoms, carbon atoms. And so glucose is just glucose. I mean, that's real important, but it's, it's not complex carbs, sure not proteins. Only glucose is the only carbon-based molecule produced by photosynthesis. So, um, now the important question, number three. How is the production of glucose by photosynthesis, production of glucose by photosynthesis, related to a leaf cell's production of proteins and phospholipid molecules, as well as other macromolecules? So this leaf cell, it produces all the macromolecules. I mean, not just glucose, it produces complex carbs, produces proteins, produces nucleic acids, produces them all. And so, how is the leaf cell's production of glucose by photosynthesis 
related to the production of all the other micromolecules. It's incredibly simple. Glucose is where it starts. It's the starter molecule. Glucose is the starter molecule. It's the starter molecule for the reduction of proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, and all the rest. And so, uh, and so uh, what does uh, glucose provide for the production of, say, complex carbs and proteins and so forth? Well, it provides three elements. There you go, CH and O. It provides CH and O. CH and O. And so, glucose, glucose. Every carbon atom in our bodies. What percentage carbon are we? 18 percent. And so a big guy like me, I've got, uh, you know, i got about 50 pounds of carbon in my body. Where does that all that carbon, uh, what could it be traced back to? A molecule of glucose that was produced by photosynthesis. All carbon in living things can be traced back to carbon in glucose. And uh, so, uh, one more time, what does the production of glucose have to do with the production of proteins? Glucose is the starter molecule. If you're the, uh, if you're the uh, foreman of the protein assembly line inside a leaf, what do you have to do? You have to tell the foreman of the photosynthesis assembly line, of course there's lots of assembly lines, but tell one of them at least, uh, hey, keep that glucose coming over there, I need it coming on over here, I need that glucose to produce my proteins. So again, glucose is where it starts. That's where the CH and O comes from for all the other macromolecules. One little problem. The macromolecules aren't just pure CH and O. Now complex carbs are, but proteins aren't, and, and neither is anything else. And so that brings us to the last question in this little section. Beside the simple raw materials of photosynthesis mentioned earlier, what is required for a plant to manufacture uh, protein molecules. Oh, protein. Well, uh, where's it? Here it is. Here's our, uh, here's our uh, amino, uh, glycine model, molecule uh, model. And the glycine is an amino acid, of course. And every, almost everything in this little model is CH and O, except for Mr. Blue Guy there. Uh, it's a different Mr. Blue Guy than another video. What's this blue guy? Represents one atom of what? Nitrogen. And so if you're a leaf and you're producing proteins, you're going to need some nitrogen. What about phospholipid molecules? Does that leaf produce phospholipid molecules? Yeah, by the bushel basket full. What are you going to need to produce phospholipid molecules? Some phosphorus. And so besides the CH and O from glucose, to make these you're going to need as a minimum, and you need a bunch of other things, but uh, you need as a minimum some nitrogen and some phosphorus. Well, where do these kind of things enter a plant? Well, you probably know, because you may fertilize your lawn, or you may uh, take uh, some plant uh, food, uh, what's that called, a miracle Grow, mix it with some water, and what are your plants, what do, what do fertilizer and miracle Grow have in them? Things like nitrogen, nitrogen and uh, phosphorus. So, uh, uh, dissolved and dissolved uh, compounds, And so those dissolved compounds are nitrogen compounds, phosphorus compounds, etc. And so nitrogen, phosphorus, and all other minerals, I mean there's a bunch uh, that need to be in the soil for proper growth. Those minerals come in through the, with the water, dissolved in the water, uh, compounds of nitrogen, etc., up to the leaves, and so that completes the picture. And so uh, that's it. That's it, have we got it? All right, one more time. Photosynthesis directly produces glucose. What's glucose got to do with the uh, production of proteins? It's the starter molecule, right? What does it provide for the production of proteins, for example? CH and O. But proteins need more than just pure CH and O. They need nitrogen and a bunch of other elements. How do those get in? They come in through uh, the leaves. And so. Uh, and so uh, if you uh, want a good looking lawn, you've got to fertilize it. Now let me ask you a quick question. Let's say you do want a good looking lawn and you're willing to work at it. Um, is it better to, uh, when you mow the lawn or, or have somebody mow the lawn, uh, to have the leaf clippings bagged? You know, 
hauled off or have the leaf clippings kind of mulched up and spread out on the lawn. Which is better for the lawn? Well, it just kind of depends. Because if you bag those leaf clippings, what's, what's going off in the bag? All these uh, elements that are locked up in the leaves, nitrogen, phosphorus, and so forth. And so if you uh, bag your clippings, you better fertilize more often because you're carrying a lot of those minerals off with those leaf clippings. If you mulch it, you spread it out, it, uh, it decomposes and those minerals go back into the soil. Alright, there you have it for this one.